Now, if you've been reading all these articles recently spelling doom and gloom for the big end, the house of Nintendo, we are here to dispel that with this land of magic, the Nintendo stand here at the Expo. There's more games here than I can actually count, because I can only count like five or six. Let's go have a wee shot. Oh well, if we can make it through the queues. Nintendo's stand at Eurogamer is always a haven of joy and happiness, and this year was no different. Obviously Nintendo's big series and well-known faces were out in force again, especially with the big Smash Brothers push, but for folk like us, it's always nice to see our favourite characters plastered in the walls. This was also our first chance to see Nintendo's new amiibo range of toys in the flesh, and oh my, they look gorgeous. I'll be distraught if Scott doesn't buy me a Kirby. Last year we didn't even get close to getting a wee shot of Bayonetta 2. This year, however, we can be arsed queuing, so we're going to give a wee shot and let's just hope it's as good as we think it will be. Cannot wait. Did you miss me? So when we finally wrestled our way to the front of the Bayonetta 2 queue, we weren't disappointed, although I can't imagine why we would have been, as this is platinum we're talking about. The first thing you realise when playing Bayonetta 2 for the first time is how well they've moved that great lightning fast combat system onto the Wii U and how fresh it still feels. There aren't many action games like Bayonetta getting released right now, and I'll be honest, this game is a treat. I played the opening of the demo which took place on the top of a fighter jet, as these things usually do. The tutorial is quick, and although the controller is far bigger than the 360 pad I played Bayonetta 1 on, you quickly get back into the flow of the battle, dodging about and flinging enemies into big massive meat grinders and smashing them into the ground with a massive stiletto heel made from your own hair. There's something special about a game so confident and so bold. It's got like an, a magnetic appeal that so many other games right now just, just seem to be missing. So, what do you say? When I finally elbowed my way in and prized the gamepad from Scott's hands, I was on top of a speeding train getting smashed by this big fella. Bayonetta 1 had some brilliant imaginative bosses and this game is no slouch either. Bayonetta herself controls just the way she always has, so picking up the controls is like slipping your hand into a well-fitting glove. Just like the first game, dodging and weaving around the boss's attacks activated slow motion witch time, which gives you the chance to counter attack and much more importantly, it looks cool as fuck. I mean, that's no surprise because Platinum are the kings of beautiful slow motion carnage. Aura Witch, or shall I call you Bayonetta? What gets me excited about Bayonetta 2 is that it's a technical and tight action game. Like Scott says, it's the kind of thing we haven't had much recently, at least not since Platinum's last game. It's a game about spectacle and making you feel like you're the king of the world when you do well at it. In fact, if you're like me, you'll still feel like the king of the world even if the results seen shows a less than stellar performance. So, Colour is very excited for Bayonetta 2 coming out next month. She might even be able to shift more Wii U's off the shop shelves. Bayonetta, you better start creating miracles. Now, again, the surprise is all a few months ago when it was revealed the Splatoon, Nintendo's new shooting game. And for the first time ever, I'm actually excited about a shooting game. So let's have a look at it and see how it plays. I'm as surprised as you are. A shooting game that Bitsocket actually likes the look of. Bloody hell. But then, just look at it. I'm a sucker for cool character designs. And running about as these wee cartoon kids is much more interesting than another bloody moody soldier. But don't let the graphics fool you. Splatoon can be hell. Right. Joe knows nothing about shooting games, I'm your war correspondent in the dark, gloomy world of Splatoon. Except, it's not dark or gloomy, in fact, this was one of the brightest things on display apart from the amiibo stand that shone brighter than the sun itself. What is Splatoon I hear you cry out? Well, it's a third person shooter where all the characters are punky wee girls firing big blobs of paint around in an effort to control the battlefield. Throw in the ability to turn into a squid to glide through your own paint and some brilliant multiplayer and you've got one of the freshest feeling games from Nintendo in quite some time. Other games at the show feel a bit like watching paint dry, but Splatoon is a rocket exploding its hot paint all over your face and chest. Aye, steady on Scott, it's not all about spraying your paint all over the shop. There's tactics there as well. Get stuck in another team's colour and you can't move as fast, leaving you vulnerable to plastering. As a man used to regularly dying in shooting games, the respawn dance is one that I've become well versed in. But wait, dying in platoon doesn't mean you have to trudge your way back to the front line. If your teammates are fighting for their lives on the other end of the level, just tap the gamepad and your wee squid will fly back into the action straight away. 
Or maybe you might want to avoid the fighting altogether, leaving the heavies to do the battling while you go to acquire a bit of the level and stealthily redecorate to your chosen colour. That's what I like about Splatoon. It's that typical Nintendo thing of approaching a type of game that I can't be arsed with, shooting, and giving me something left field to do with it. The worry is that folk who are more into standard shooting games will pass it by. And that'd be a shame, because Splatoon is a game that is dying for a massive, healthy group of folk playing online together. We're going to be cautiously optimistic though, and predict a wee Nintendo classic. Oh, look at that adorable wee woolly dinosaur. Yoshi's Woolly World is like a big cuddle of a game, a gentle 2D platformer with a lovely art style. I'm a big fan of Kirby's Epic Yarn, which is very similar to this, but Yoshi's more 3D look just adds so much more to the visuals. The balls of yarn that make up the world look so fuzzy and soft that you just want to snuggle up with them. Well, I do anyway. But how does it play? Well, if you've played the older Yoshi games, you'll recognise his hover jump and being able to throw eggs to hit baddies. You can throw balls of wool to tunnel through the levels and there's a lovely wee twist in the formula where you throw wee eggs to make platforms through the sky to walk on. Look, I just love it, okay? I love wee Willy Yoshi. I want to put him in my pocket and bring him out every time I feel sad because just looking at him makes me smile. Not just with my face, but with my heart too. Talking about cute wee characters that melt my heart, here's Captain Toad. It was a lovely surprise when Nintendo revealed they'd be getting his own full game, and Scott and I were looking forward to giving it a try here at Eurogamer. I was a big fan of the Captain Toad levels in Super Mario World 3D, and so it was pretty much a given that I'd enjoy this game. It looks lovely, and they've ramped up the challenge quite a lot, certainly in this demo. The only real worry for a game like this is whether or not Nintendo can make it interesting over the course of what seems to be a full priced game. Many of the levels shown so far seem to have one clear route to the goal, and without that delicious replay value, the game might not have the staying power of some of Nintendo's recent classics. Don't get me wrong though, the game is lovely, but time will tell a wee bit on this one. Shovel Knight, played here on the Wii U, is a smashing Wii game that I've been aching to play. Look, I know it's out on PC, but that's besides the point. The game feels magic on that big pad. It's a great concept, going a knight whose primary weapon is a great big shovel that used to attack enemies and dig up piles of lovely cash. The presentation is great too, with a nice retro aesthetic and a brilliant soundtrack. And although it's been delayed in the UK, the game is rumoured now to be getting a certification and we could begin on our greasy Wii U's and 3DS's very shortly. Now if you remember back in the dark days of 2013, we did a video about good travelling games and I talked a bit about Stealth Inc. 1 on the PS Vita. I enjoyed the game, with its challenging level design and its dark sense of humour and I'm happy to say the sequel keeps all of that good stuff and adds in a kind of metroidvania element to proceedings with different larger ears to explore in your quest to escape from being squashed, shredded, sliced and burned. Again, like Shovel Knight, it's good to see these smaller games getting a show in at the expo because these are the games that will help push the Wii U and the 3DS into totally new areas, just like Sony right now supporting so many smaller developers to diversify their range. Now while Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate was on the show floor, we got a chance to give it a wee shot and munch on some, well, interesting Monster Hunter themed food while we played it. So while I dug some fish roll out of a carved skull of a fresh hunt, Scott took the first turn. While Joe stuffed his face with monster bits, I had a go at my first local co-op hunt in a Monster Hunter game and I have to say, I was really impressed. The game itself has a few improvements over the previous game, looking a bit cleaner and controlling well even without the extra circle pad on the 3DS. The new weapons felt good as well, with the new insect glaive being my favourite of the two, a mix of kind of like a spear and a blow dart. The monsters themselves are still great fun and busting a character from the first dinosaur we took down to the massive crab monster that had a dragon's face for an arse. This game a few pals around you definitely has that special feeling. Now I reviewed Monster Hunter 3 on the 3DS last year. It was my first time with the series and the steady rhythm of going out on a hunt and coming back with spoils was relaxing and even therapeutic. This was my first chance to play the multiplayer and that relaxation was replaced with desperation and frenzied teamwork as our small group tried to take down our mark. I'll be honest, I thought I was shit hot with a long blade in Monster Hunter, but I think I let the group down pretty badly. 
I still had fun though. I think the series is a perfect fit for the 3DS, and I think I was probably the only guy in there with the 3D ramped up to the top, because I'm weird like that. There are a few niggles that are still there from the last game though. I get that splitting the world up into numbered areas makes it easier to tell your teammates where to go to find the monster you're looking for, but the loading screens that split up the world can be an annoyance, especially when you're knocked back by a big attack at an area's edge and end up in the next area, having to slog your way back through the loading screen again. It's something that long time fans of the games are cool with, but I was a wee bit disappointed. Still, slashing away at a dinosaur is massively satisfying, so at least the meat and potatoes of the game are solid. Talking about meat and potatoes, maybe it's time for the next course. Between Smash Brothers and Monster Hunter, you'll be forgiven for missing out on some other wee 3DS treats on show. Here's Shanty, continuing the old school 2D adventures of the genie with a cult following. Way forward, the makers have a proven record of filling their 2D platformers with charm and beautiful animation, and they haven't let us down here. Shanty's deadly hair whip is great fun to hit baddies with, and jumping around the level I tried reminded me so much of classic Mega Drive and SNES platformers that I'd play with my pals when I was wee. Games like Persona Q aren't the best for playing on a packed expo floor, but I did have a quick shot and I liked what I played. It's bright, colourful and with that daft sense of humour that Persona games tend to have hiding away under the dark stories. This game goes back to the Shin Megami Tensei roots of dungeon crawling in first person and the bottom screen shows the maps as you wander about. Hopefully, when it's out later in the year, I'll be able to give it a proper wee shot. So then, that's Nintendo. So, any picks for you? What was your best game there? I mean, best game, I mean Splatoon is amazing. Oh, I that's going to be amazingly yeah. good fun to yeah. play more of. Uh, I mean, I love Shovel Knight. Yeah. Actually, I know you can already play on PC, but I've been kind of waiting. There's also, I mean, Bayonetta 2. Oh, I definitely. Cannot wait for yeah. that. Although well, the thing is, I totally put you to shame with your Bayonetta 2 skills because you were awful at it. And I, was I, I got to play the first two minutes of Bayonetta 2. Mr. Hog, the controller. And I was quite good at it. I saw the guy next to me go, <laughs> hey, so, I saw a mouth of words, the chosen one. So uh, Nintendo put on a strong, strong showing again. It did indeed. Definitely.